The Thorough Analysis of the Origin of Species, Lesson 16. Do you know why strawberry is red? The title of Chapter 6 is Difficulties of the Theory. If organisms vary gradually, the following opposite opinions can be proposed against natural selection. These difficulties and objections may be classified under the following headers. First, if species have descended from other species by fine graduations, why do we cannot see innumerable transitional forms everywhere? Secondly, is natural selection which produces an organ of trifling importance such as the tail of a giraffe able to produce an organ so wonderful as the eyes. Thirdly, can instincts be acquired and modified through natural selection? Fourthly, offspring becomes being sterile when species crossed. Whereas, why is their fertility unimpaired when varieties are crossed? How can we account for these phenomena? All are explainable in natural selection. The first two will be discussed here and the others in the chapters treating with instinct and hybridism. Why are species of which variation is proceeding not found or rare? Natural selection exterminates its own less improved parent forms and other less favored forms with which it comes into competition. Innumerable transitional forms linking all the species of the same group closely together must have existed, but natural selection have continuously exterminated the parent forms and the intermediate, though the evidence of transitional forms could be found only amongst fossil remains. Geological records are not complete and are discontinuous, so the evidence of transition cannot help being discontinuous. Content as being relevant to this will be discussed in detail in the chapter treating with the reason why geological records are imperfect. Secondly, during the summer, a mink of North America dives for and preys on fish, but during the long winter, it leaves the frozen waters and preys like other land animals. A flying squirrel flies in the sky and creeps on all four limbs as well. The directions of natural selection are various and random, and individuals preserve and accumulate the variations of that way in the process of reproducing. Seeing from the human standpoint, the tail of a giraffe may be considered as a very trifling thing. But nobody knows what sort of benefit it gave to a giraffe. He who believes in separate and innumerable acts of creation may say that in this case it has pleased the Creator to cause a being of one type to take the place of one belonging to another type. But this seems to me only restating the fact in dignified language. Charles Darwin says that evolutionists' attitude is no more than a word game to draw the creator into the logic to deny the conception of natural selection, besides keeping to the conception of separate creation. Also, he indicates that this is only restating the fact in dignified language. The capitalized word, the creator, 
signified God Jehovah. When Nicholas Copernicus said that the sun is stationary and the earth goes round the sun, all people said it is not true. It is said that vox populi, vox dei, but there is no such a word in science. They ask, if such variations should be useful to an animal on the changing conditions of life, then a perfect and complex eye could be formed by natural selection. Every step in the process of variations was only not elucidated, but this question cannot explode the theory of natural selection. But may not this inference be presumptuous? Have we any right to assume that the Creator works by intellectual power like those of man? His question implicates that a perfect and complex organ like I cannot be formed by human, but can be by God or natural selection. He is going to say that natural selection is a methodology and a providence that God manages nature, and they are not measured by intellectual power of man. This is the end of today's lecture. Shalom.